Hello! I will be playing for you Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata on the harpsichord. You will ask why. Well, actually, it was first published for fortepiano and harpsichord on the title page. So if I were some countess living at the time and only having a harpsichord at my disposal, then I will be playing Moonlight Sonata on the harpsichord. So let's find out what it sounds like. When I started practicing it on the harpsichord, I ran into lots of issues. First issue was the tempo. The piano tempo that I would be playing it on the piano just felt way too slow and actually really boring. So in fact, when I looked in the music, I've suddenly realized after all these years of playing the sedata that it has um, the alla breve uh, time signature, which means you play it in two rather than in four. So that certainly informed my tempo choice. Um, another issue is, of course, you can't freely, um, flexibly use dynamics on the harpsichord. So certain things had to be um, sustained, certain things had to be let go uh, to create an illusion of dynamic, gathering more sounds together and letting go to um, release the tension. Also, the slurs come in really useful. You don't really notice the slurs when you play it on the, on the piano because everything is pedaled over anyway. And occasionally you will kind of take notice of them in terms of phrasing, but you certainly don't make any gestural gaps between the notes whatsoever. So that has been really helpful, almost in the way that those slurs were written for the harpsichord quite a lot of the time, if not every single time it ends before the bar nine, which is a bit of a baroque feature. Um, another thing, the textures. I can't bring out the top voice on the piano. You totally can, of course, um, and put the accompanying uh, arpeggios in the background. Here I can't do it as much, <laughs> if at all. So I play around with sustaining those arpeggios and letting them be nice and separate in places to try and vary um, that part of the texture. Um, I'm lucky to be able to use two manuals. Uh, and the sonority is slightly different. It's the same single eight foot strings. But plucked at different points. So the upper manual has the, plec um, the jacks that are plucking closer to the bridge. This is the bridge and the jacks are just here. So uh, this makes a, the sound slightly more nasal, different, um, different quality. To me, it sounds a little bit quieter as well somehow. But using two manuals would have been a bit of a luxury. Um, tuning, also, this is not equal temperament. This is interesting because, of course, Beethoven would have been using the temperament of the time, and we don't really know which temperament he would have been using. Um, but at the time, people mostly used um, circular temperaments, basically what Bach wrote in <laughs> his well-tempered clavier for. So it's the temperament in which you can play in all the keys, but each key has its own special quality. Um, some of them sound much more purely in tune, like C major in this case, some of them less so. So this is your C sharp major, and Beethoven chose to write in C sharp minor. Slightly more, um, slightly gentler sonority, let's say, but listen to the dominant. A bit of lemon juice there, certainly a lot of tension. Um, so this is Valotti Young um, temperament, which was brought forward in 1800s, 1799. Um, so about the same time, I don't know if Beethoven actually used um, this temperament, but it's certainly the temperament of the time. So that's really, really good to know. And uh, so that certainly adds a different quality to this to this music and um, a little bit more drama, I think, um, together with the faster tempo. Um, not being able to tune away dramatic low octaves and very busy accompaniments, all of that creates a very different um, Moonlight Sonata to me. And then, of course, we look at the title. Of course, Moonlight Sonata, some of you will know, was not given to the Sonata by Beethoven. It was um, mentioned, <laughs> it described as such, uh, by a critic uh, well after Beethoven's death. 
So it's got nothing to do with Beethoven. Um, and so the sonata is called Sonata Quasi Una Fantasia. And actually, with this tempo and all the other details that I described, it really does feel like a free flow of um, imagination, somewhat painfully self-searching um, and sometimes serene, but certainly not without an inner torment. So I thought um, this piece might be a rather apt one to end this um, rather painful and um, dramatic year and um, to hopefully um, look forward to a much more exciting, productive and safe new year. So all the best to you all and hope you enjoy Beethoven on harpsichord.